I want to thank you for tuning in on today's show of Making a Mark with Atari Estes. And what we're going to be addressing on today and for the rest of the week, a series uh, for the month of May on Mental Health Awareness Month. Yes, we are at that crucial point um, in our society that a lot is happening and mental health is one of those conversational pieces that is not discussed um, as much with me um, being an entrepreneur. First of all, being a mother, a single mother of two daughters, one of my uh, children is uh, a young adult that I'm a caregiver for uh, with emotional uh, mental illnesses um, and learning disabilities. So growing up in a household, raising her has been a, a transformation. One, I've learned a whole lot from her. Um, I learned a lot in this process and what I would say for the sake of what I'm gonna talk about now versus where I will go in a different direction, we need to make sure that we have a circle of care for caregivers. It can be very stressful and not blaming anything on our children who didn't ask to be diagnosed with an illness like this. Um, They didn't ask to be challenged, um, have a different life. Um, But we all are challenged, but it's harder on them because they're young and they're impressionable and they want to be seen as like everyone else growing up. So it is very difficult to see a young child grow up to feel different, um, have to do things differently than other other children and be able to not have a, a stigma towards themselves or for what the media has put out um, concerning um, negatively trying to expose and change the negative talk about mental illness. Um, I have definitely had my share of stressful points, so I don't want to um, make this um, tra- um, transparency seem like everything is is easy. I definitely will tell you that we've had our tsunamis, tornadoes, um, thunderstorms, floods that seem like it would never end. And that is because they are fighting within what is wrong with them. How did they get there? What happened? For my daughter, she has a story that actually has been a aftermath of triggers for her. She suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder as one of her uh, diagnoses now because she was misdiagnosed with just a particular condition only to come to find out that wasn't the full fact. And I'm gonna talk about that uh, when you are caring for your child and you're trying to believe in your healthcare provider and and get all the support that you're needing to assist your home, your family, and to make sure that, you know, everyone comes home safe and sound. But on today's um, show, we're going to we're going to work backwards in, in this. And what I mean backwards um, I want to talk about the caregivers and how you can take care of yourself and not lose yourself. So in in my research and the work that I do um, in the community as a community health worker, um, I educate and make the community aware that you're not alone. 
no way, form, or fashion would I want you to feel like you're alone. I know what that feels like, and I don't want anyone to ever feel that way. And I'm hoping that by the time I get through my series of the circle of care and to to really inform the caregivers that we matter, I'm hoping to be able to give you a little bit more uh, comfort into being okay that you have support. And that's what I want to create, a support. But I want to be able to introduce to others um, who are not aware about caregivers who are tending to, to adults who are suffering um, from um, mental illness, emotional, any type of disability, or caring for an elder. Um, yeah. So some of my data research um, that I get, I'm just going to share an estimate of 8.4 million provide care to someone with mental illness. Being an effective caregiver is definitely difficult, and to meet the challenge, you need to take care of yourself. <laughs> Sounds simple, so simple for us to say that, but those who provide care knows otherwise. There are so many barriers to care for yourself, such as setting aside time, finding uh, resources, and tendency to put yourself last. How many caregivers can relate to that? Um, I am very intentional about what I do now to, to challenge myself. And as I move forward, I'm hoping that you all can, can see where I'm coming from with it. Taking care of yourself is the most important thing that you can do, not only for yourself, but also for the person you care for and the rest of the family. And I, and I know this is being said, if something was to happen to you, who will your family be able to depend on? Who? You've been the, the go-to person. You've been the mediator. You've been the advocate. You've been the, the, you, you've been the fight to the very end. But if something was to happen to you, where would your loved one be able to go? And who can they trust outside of you? Hmm. Family caregivers carry the weight of not only providing personal and instrumental care. We run errands. <laughs> We gotta get medication, but they often have to manage other responsibilities. I do it all. And I don't know how I do it, but by the grace of God, his grace is sufficient and he really he really steps in to give me the strength, the, the stamina to keep pushing through. What do you do when you get tired? Keep going? What do you do when you need help? <laughs> Keep going? What happens when you cannot go anymore? I'm doing this episode, one, because during this pandemic of this coronavirus, my daughter has hit a downward spiral like I haven't seen. She's an adult now, so we've gone through different phases when she was a, a teenager. But being a young adult and now going through depression, anxieties, the, the bipolar is way up and down. There's it's no, no balance, no rationale. And you can't get them to see reason. Um, they've been a very routine um, individual, you know, active dancer, full-time dancer, full-time college student. 
bubbly, tons of friends. And now this quarantine has made her whole life come to a halt. And she barely feeling motivated these days. I said all of that to say, when you're watching your loved one going through the battle, what do you think it does for you? You connect, you, you take that same energy and it taps you out. It wears on your heart. It stresses you from the inside out. And I'm talking from experience. Take care of yourself. Because taking care of yourself includes recognizing when you need help to balance your own physical, emotional, financial, social, and spiritual needs. Listen, mental health caregivers experience many challenges. So look, you're not alone. Millions of caregivers express high level of stress, financial issues, isolation, and concerns for the future. Studies of the caregivers of adults with mental illness found that mental health caregiver experience higher levels of stress than other family caregivers. The typical mental health caregiver provides an average of 32 hours of care per week for an average of nine years. Mental health caregivers address their care recipients needs for more hours a week and more years on average than caregivers for other conditions. Care recipients are likely to be financially dependent upon family and friends, 49% to 64%. I'm reading statistics. My daughter is fighting to keep in line her disability, financial disability, and her medical disability because she is an adult now. And the Social Security Disability Office is trying to revoke and say that she don't have enough I don't know, because we have doctors, we have all the paperwork to show her her needing the support in order to survive in this day-to-day life that she lives, regardless of her being a, a student and she's dancing. The thing is, when she don't have the energy to go and her mental state just shuts off unbeknownst to us, guess what? She's not able to function, no way, form, fashion regardless of what someone may do. That is, this is a switch that is not one that you can say, okay, you can go to work and you're able to make it and you don't need any support. No, it doesn't work like that. Few parents who are mental health caregivers have plans in place for someone to care for their son or daughter when they can no longer do so, and that's 32%. And I never thought about it like that. It's why I was saying that openly, that I don't even have a plan in place for my daughter. I know that I try to teach her to have independence, but I never thought about me not being here to take care of her. Parents who care for people with mental illness say their say their caregiving role has their own health worse at 62 percent as they continue to age and provide care they may be forced to rely on others yet 65 percent of parent caregivers reported that there were no other family members or friends for their adult child to turn to for assistance and I will say that that is true 
as once I found out and she was diagnosed and I knew before then she was actually diagnosed by a professional provider, healthcare provider that is, there was no one who wanted to stand there to support and assist me through the cares of her in and out of the hospital. Making sure she made it to her appointments. I didn't work for a period of time because it was so critical of her life not being guaranteed that she was going to make it from one day to the next because of her condition not being stable. And with this pandemic taking place, you can get the telehealth, you can get the doctors on, on the line, and she. And one thing I have to, it, medication isn't for everyone. For those who are able to take it, take it. Do what you need to do to balance. But unfortunately, she's allergic to all antidepressants, so she can't even take anything to stabilize her. So when she is not stable, I have to go through this with her. I have all alternative medic medicines for her, but that's not in this episode that we're going to talk about because I'm going to share as a mental health advocate, and I'm an advocate in other areas, to make sure that my child and any other child who is an adult who's needing the proper care can have a holistic approach to their treatment and not just one type of prescription. Challenges facing mental health caregivers, we all can see this, loneliness, isolation, lack of social support, health issues related to stress of caregiving, navigating the care system, boy, wait until I'm able to talk about some of those topics later. Accurate and timely diagnosis for the care recipient, medication management, which she was on until we found out that she can no longer take it. It was a nightmare for us because they were trying to get her stable. And once we found out that it was causing more harm than good, we had to find other measures. Planning for the future, mental health caregiving training and education. And one thing I can definitely say, group sessions that we had to attend, that we wanted to attend, learning all coping skills, it was very beneficial for us. It was very beneficial for me. And it was beneficial for my other daughter, who also is a caregiver to her sister. But not in the same capacity that I am. I'm, I'm the leader. She had to learn how to assist her sister in different things that of support. We needed that. I needed that. And she helped me through that. What can you do to care for yourself? There are several ways you can care for yourself as you continue your caregiving journey. The National Alliance for Caregiving provides a caregiver health self-assessment questionnaire on their website. The tool helps you to look at your own situation, consider options, and make decisions that will allow you to take care of yourself within the context of your caregiving responsibilities. This information will be in a description of this episode, so you don't have to search for it. It will be in a description for you to be able to follow up to find that tool. And it is a uh, PDF file. And it will also be in Spanish as well. So it's in English and it's in Spanish. Physical health is very important. I am an advocate for health and wellness, um, health and wellness coach. Um, I educate people on taking care of themselves. And, that, and I did that because I was losing myself as a caregiver. So I had to turn that negative into a positive. And what I found to be very important, physical health is very important. So I'm suggesting, please take care of yourself. It includes physical activity, sleep, 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 any way that you can, and diet. And at a minimum, physical activity 
has many benefits that are well documented. Although for caregivers, it is difficult to find the time to fit it in. See, I know how hard it is when you can't get away from the home. So I have a remedy for everything right now because I had to do it. A short walk can bring benefits and can be accomplished with a mindful approach and some planning. The following are some tips to include regular physical activity. Listen, set a timer for taking a walk, non-negotiable. Plan your route ahead of time. Bring walking shoes with you or keep them in your car. For smartphone users, consider downloading an app such as Map My Walk. It's free and to help provide motivation related to calories, burn, distance, etc. It, it does everything. It, it, it will talk to you and let you know that you, you've met your duration. So get that. Set a goal for your walk, such as 20 minutes to start, um, which can be 10 minutes one way, 10 minutes back. I've implemented to, to do several things. Um, also, if leaving the home is a barrier to physical activity, look around your home for opportunities to exercise. For example, climbing the stairs, if that is accessible to you, running in place, or floor stretches. There are several online programs that provide guidance in home exercises. I will leave some links also in the description of this episode. So please, 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 please. Look at the description, and I'm going to make sure this is left for you to follow. And although it can be a challenge at times, eating well is important. Eating a balanced diet is important for your overall health and for your ability to care for the person you love. Stay hydrated by drinking plenty of water and minimize alcohol intakes during stressful times. Please, I'm, I'm telling you what I know. Drinking while you stress doesn't help. It's not a good mix. Find another outlet to de-stress. Do not drink alcohol, very minimal to none, when you're stressful. Journal, listen to music. Um, any Walk longer, walk longer. I, do something, walk in place, I, whatever it is. Find some music to kind of give you an isolation and visualize yourself somewhere like on the beach. Sleep is important. Get as much uninterrupted sleep as you can. And when you cannot sleep through the night, find times to nap, even for short periods of time. I'm going to try to make this... Um, a little bit more... Spiritual health, um, a tenure spiritual side, can take many forms, including prayer, meditation, yoga, spending time in nature, personal writing, or attending worship services. The main benefit of spiritual practice for caregiver is the time you dedicate to yourself. One thing we know about caregiving is that it leaves very little time for you. There are many ways to infuse spiritual activities into your daily life. Look, take that walk in a place that is quiet or peaceful. Access to the internet allows those who can't get away to take a few moments for an online yoga class, meditation lessons, or writing group. Your local library isn't open right now, so I would have suggested that, but you have um, library online to where you can rent out um, books on spirituality and different things, so utilize the library. Um, Local groups found on meetup.com or through your community um, centers. Um, I'm going to see if I can find some other resources and leave it in our description link as well. Emotional health caregiving can be an emotional journey. It is critical to recognize. Also, when you need emotional support from friends, family, or others who are on similar journeys, look, I found it to be, I, 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 I am definitely an introvert. I mean, I come out of my shell and be an extrovert when it comes to work-related community things. But you need support. You need to be around people that can support you, um, your, you emotionally, um, especially those who can relate. 
especially those who can relate. Talking to someone who cannot relate is almost like talking to a brick wall. Don't do it because you're going to get more upset and more frustrated. Knowing that you are not alone and that others are there for you can provide much needed comfort. So taking care of yourself emotionally will allow you to find the strength to continue to hold on through this journey as a caregiver. That is building resilience. And there are many ways to improve your emotional health. One, caregiver support groups are a wonderful way to connect with others. Uh, we're going to leave a link for you to, um, to have that because I believe in leaving some um, beneficial resources. Um, there are many types of groups such as uh, condition specific, gender specific, online or in-person groups. I'm going to consider um, if this is something that you all would like. I am considering doing an online group um, to kind of help out and to gain our own support, our own network. Um, and, and not on a uh, medical terminology, but just be in the support group to one another. I can talk more about it as I get through all of this because I think we can support one another through this journey. Social support is a critical to emotional health. Uh, set aside time on a regular basis to meet a friend uh, for coffee, have a friend come visit you. We know that social distancing is in place. So do a, a Zoom conference, um, do a duo, FaceTime, whatever that is. And if you all can meet up at a park, have your face mask on and get out and, and be around people. Um, not a bunch, but those who are, are practicing safety practices with the face mask and social distancing from others. Um, do something for yourself. Take yourself um, out to eat. Order something to eat. And although time is often the main issue, it is important to find some time for your needs so that you can continue to care for your care recipient. Your local area agencies on aging may be able to provide resources for re, um, respite care um, and whatever it is that you're needing that I may not discuss in this episode, please reach out to me, leave a comment, um, ask your questions. Um, and I will be able to um, find a resource that could assist you further because that's what it's all about, community care. Now, the financial health is taking care of yourself means taking care of your finances. Uh, caring for the care recipient can often mean out-of-pocket expenses. Yes, I spend a lot um, to care. Meeting with financial advisors can help you, which I'm planning to do that. Um, and to inform me on some decisions that, um, that really came to mind that I want to have in place. And I definitely will be leaving some other helpful uh, websites in the description box that may meet your need and it may not, um, but I'm hoping that this particular uh, circle of care is our part one for our um, for our Mental Health Awareness Month, I would say, um, was really enlightening to you. I'm hoping to be able to enhance and bring other um, healthy tips to you all that would be beneficial. And I can only share my own personal um, experience um, as I have always done. I know that I talk a lot about my my businesses and, and things and how you can um, create your own income and, and, and different things of that nature. But when it comes to topics that I am, that I live personally, is why I grind so hard to do the things that I do. I really don't want to come off and, and talk about all of just all of you talk about all of my success or resources that I have to offer you and you don't know why I'm pushing so hard to make these things available for you I do that because once upon a time I walked in a dark place to where it looked like I was really alone as a caregiver as a victim as a I mean, 
I've had my own health crisis, um, not just because I, I, I'm a caregiver, but I've had my own health scares, and um, and I have to make sure I, I stay healthy and whole. And everything that I do to to offer you a little bit more of a way out, a way up, how to, um, is because there is a way. And I'm not gonna say if you don't do it, it's not, it's not, it's up to you. I mean, it is up to you. What I'm trying to let you know, will you come along and allow the support to help you to get encouraged, to regain your hope, and to look forward to what's ahead. I understand that life is not fair and troubles are on every side, but that trouble can't last always. And I really thought that what I was experiencing um, when my daughter was about nine years old, really it was younger, but nine years old, that preteen age and now she's full adult and and now my my life has really is not worse. It is better than what it was because I have persevered and I do plan to continue to endure through whatever comes my way. I never said that I, I wanted to throw in the towel, but it does get hard. It get hard for anyone who are going through. Look at what's happening in society. A lot of people are unemployed right now. Look at the stress level that must have on people. There are those who are used to going to the doctor and, and being seen by the doctors for whatever their condition is and can't get to the doctor and, or can't take their caregiver with them to attend. How does that make a person feel when once upon a time they are hands on and now they can't even have anyone to be there to assist to make sure that they are taken care of properly. So this is just part one of the series and this one is very beneficial because for me it is about self care. Taking care of yourself and learning how to be a part of that that circle of care. And if I can do anything at this point in time, that is render resources, um, empowerment, inspiration, motivation, and awareness. And I'm hoping that I advocated for, for anyone who suffer in silence with mental illness. Um, any disability, but that this one in particular, mental illness is a real, it's different. I know that I've suffered because I suffered from being shot and left for dead, and you have the aftermath of PTSD and depression, and you have your own anxieties. But for me, I found other ways to um, manage and, and get through my my dark times. It was dark, but I know I couldn't stay there. For others, it may not be that easy to get through. So what is it that you can do? I want to be able to show you a way. I want to be able to be um, there th- through the journey to show you that there is a way. And my heart is full but it also aches when people feel like all hope is gone because I was there. I really, it was just yesterday. And then to be reminded that my daughter has gone through or going through this episode right about now, which triggered from a situation actually um, from the... um, COVID-19 and then other things started happening then it just seemed like she was being swallowed up and with her having an emotional um, condition already it it was hard for her to bounce back so I'm asking for anyone who's listening to this message not only am I praying for you but I'm asking for you all to pray for me Pray for my family, 
because I'm definitely praying for our nation. I'm praying for anyone and everyone worldwide. Nobody's exempt from going through. Nobody asks to, to be going through this hardship. But I would definitely say what the world need now is to show more love and compassion towards one another. I know that this too shall pass. I know this too shall pass. One is because I believe in my prayer time that God has given me strength to endure. He's going to give my daughter the endurance and he's going to give her peace in her mind and in her emotions. And everything is going to be all right. These are the things that I couldn't plan to talk about. This is something that had to be told at a time like this because it hurts. And I know that there's no way that I'm the only one hurting. But see, I have on my side solutions and someone don't have solutions they don't know what to do so if you're listening to this episode if this message resonates with you leave a comment ask any further questions that you may have follow this station whichever one that allow you to hear it share 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 get this message around to the people who are really going to need it I know that I have not gone through years of trials tests and tribulation and the revelation to know that my daughter is not alone and I know for any parent, caregivers, not even just parents, caregivers who have children, young or an adult with a disability of mental illness, knows this is not anything to play with. Our lives are not our own. We always multitasking. And we do spend more time assisting them than we do everyone else. We do attend to them more than we do anyone else. And you see that we put ourselves last. But I'm going to encourage caregivers around the world who are able to listen. We are going to learn to have a balance to take care of ourselves so we can have a longer lifespan here on earth and put in place the proper support for our loved ones. But when the day comes and we're not here, they need to have a support system. Let us not neglect what's going to happen because it's going to happen to each and every one of us. Let us be mindful. Let us be quick. And let us do it in love. Social media platform is Atara Estes. Follow me on social media of any platform that you can find me on. Um, Rather that be Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Author Atara Estes is on Facebook. Atara Estes is on all the other platforms, YouTube. I'm on a mission to increasing. And I'm on an increase of getting the message out. And this is just one of the series for the mental health uh, segment. And we are talking about the caregivers. This is Mental Health Awareness Month. I do not want to neglect, I want to salute all of the caregivers who are doing a phenomenal job 
and taking care of your loved ones or taking care of someone's loved one. Whichever way it falls, I salute you too. Don't forget about yourselves. I will be back next time on the next series for our mental health topic. We're going to keep going and we're going to raise the bar. We're going to hold one another accountable and we're going to build out this network. Be able to check out my website, atariestes.com. There are a lot of things that I'm doing. There are a lot of things that may be of interest to you. You can get some freebies on there. You can, you can sign up for some workshops that are free right now. You can even sign up to be a part of the 2190 Day Challenge that is going on now for the next 90 days. Um, uh, if you need some product, I can, you can request to have some free samples sent to you. Hey, and, and there's a lot more other things that are going on. Check out ataraestes.com. You won't be sorry. There's something for everyone. If you're ready to travel and get out or you want to plan to travel with your family in the next year or so, guess what? You can book now and vacation later. <laughs> it's all there on ataraestes.com. If you're looking to be encouraged to find out more about my story and, and how I survived domestic violence, go on ataraestes.com, click on the shop, purchase the book, leave a review. All proceeds go to support the work and to invest in the women's shelter so they will have a way of rebuilding their lives. See, this is about showing others how to have a way of living again. And that's what I'm here for, to show others how to live again. Yeah, I didn't say it was going to be easy, but it is necessary. And if you're able to open your eyes another day, then it's meant for you to be here, to do what you are planned and purposed to do on this journey. So I hope I've said something that would be able to share it, share it, share it. Don't keep it to yourself. Share this segment. Next series coming up. The next ebook is being developed and the next online course is also being created. We all have gifts and abilities. And right about now, the caregiver is the topic. So I want you all to be good to yourself always and to one another. Thank you for tuning in as always. Until next time, be blessed.